I started out uh, in 1978 uh, as a landscape architect, uh, 10 years out of school, knowing nothing about trees, knowing nothing about soils, and yet I was designing trees and soils, and, and, and I was, had just reached the point in my career where I realized that a lot of things I did in the first 10 years of my career were total disasters. Um, and I met a really mar remarkable uh, person named Tom Perry who kind of shook me up and, and brought me to realize that I needed to learn a lot more if I was going to be professionally out there planting trees and, and messing in the soil. Um, so I was uh, 1978 and in 2008, 30 years later, Up My Roots uh, comes out and it really represents uh, essentially that 30 year journey. Um, to get where I am. Um, the book is designed, it was written for landscape architects. Um, my publisher, I demanded from my publisher, ISA, that there be a picture on every page. And ISA go, uh, why do you need a picture on every page? I said, because it's for landscape architects. They don't read it if there's not a picture on every page. Um, so, we yeah, had a few of those things to go over between the arborists and the landscape architects. Um, you'll be happy to know that there are no uh, references and footnotes in this book. You just have to trust me um, because I feel that references and footnotes are just going to put you to sleep. There are a few books that I used to references, but it's, it's not intended to be um, an academic text. It's not a science book. It's just my view of the world um, after 30 years of, of working and messing around in soils. Um, I started this journey trying to do trees better, um, and, and I was thinking, you know, we just have to change the species, we have to do something, maybe we get rid of the tree grades, but it all led to soils. It's all about soils. If you try and do healthy trees, you have to do healthy soils. So that's what we're going to talk about um, tonight, is how do I, how do some simple ideas to get to healthy soils. Um, so when we start thinking about soils, most of us start in this texture box over there. We, you know, we know we have a, a clay loam soil or sandy loam soil or a loam soil. Um, and all that tells us is the, how much sand, silt, and clay in the soil we have. It doesn't even talk about organic matter. I can show you a sandy a loam soil, a loam soil, you think, oh, great soil, with zero organic matter. Um, it just says how much sand, silt, and clay we have in the soil. So it doesn't tell us a whole lot. And we have six boxes here, and you have to know information about all six boxes. Um, if we study the soil a little bit more, we might take and send a cup of it out to um, a soil lab and get the nutrients. Um, and all that's going to tell us is what the NPK and, and maybe five or six other micronutrients um, um, are in the soil. And if we're really smart, we're going to send it out and get a pH uh, analysis, um, which is just simply the acidity of the soil but pH controls the way the tree can uptake nutrients. So if I have great nutrients and lousy pH, it doesn't matter. So, I, so on these first two boxes, texture and nutrients, if I ignore pH, I've ignored the, one of the most important parts of the soil. Um, and then finally we get to organic matter, and people go, oh, we gotta, you know, how are we gonna replace the organic matter in the soil? We gotta have a lot of organic matter in the soil. The truth is, that good agricultural soils here in the east coast of the United States have about 2 to 3% organic matter. Um, a lot of the soil mixes that, that we're making up might be 7 or 8% organic matter. Have we made that soil better by dramatically increasing the organic matter? I'm, I'm not sure that we have. Um, and there are a lot of other things going on. Um, and then finally, there are these last two boxes, which are much more difficult to figure out. The density of the soil. How much is that soil compacted? How much pore space is in that soil? And nothing about, I, I can't test this by sending the soil off to a lab. Um, I can if I send an undisturbed sample, but that's really hard to do. Um, I gotta start making density analysis either through some very specific in the field tests uh, that, that I do do occasionally, but they're expensive, they're hard to do. And most of the time, I'm telling density by simply looking at the soil and understanding it and understanding the relationship between density and the last box, which is structure. 
And structure is simply the way the sand, silt, and clay and the organic matter are glued together. Because we're, we're not, if you send your soil out for a textural analysis, the first thing you do is it's going to break all those, those little uh, clay pads together. They're going to wash the clay off the sand. They're going to essentially break apart the soil and just tell you what the constituents are. But they don't tell you anything about the interrelationships of silt, sand, and clay. And only structure begins to give us that. And the structure box, if I was going to start anywhere, the first thing I do is I look at the structure. The second thing I do is to look at the density. I'm going to then look maybe at the color of the soil, which is going to tell me a little bit about the organic matter. I'm going to worry a whole lot about pH. And you know what? I don't really worry too much about texture and nutrients. Uh, because if I can get those other boxes right, I'm, a, I'm home free. So I want you to think about this circle of these interrelated um, events from the totally opposite end, start at structure, end at texture, rather than starting at texture and ending with structure. It's going to give you a whole new outlook um, on soil.